Welcome to the Zach's Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zacks.com. Well, as of this taping, the government is still shut down and the debt ceiling deadline is approaching. So what exactly is the stock market operating on, fundamentals or technicals? Our panelists are going to shed some light on that for us. Tracy Reinick, our equity strategist in the value category. Senior equity strategist Nick Kalivas is here, as well as our ETF strategist Eric Dutram. So, Nick, you say it's technicals. Yeah, I think there has been a lot of technical um, you know, activity in the market. We got kind of through the 50-day moving average. I think you had some selling based on that. Then it kind of came back, I think, on short covering a little bit. Uh, because of the news in Washington late last week, and now it's down a little bit because we don't have the, the news. So I think, uh, I think a lot of it's just people positioning for earnings and kind of positioning for uh, what's happening in Washington. Okay, Tracy, you agree technicals are the driver here? Yeah, that's all that matters. Uh, anything, you know, as Nick said, as we saw at the end of last week, when it looked like we were going to get, at least they were talking, we might get an agreement. Everybody's like, yeah, we knew this would happen. And but stocks rallied um, basically almost to new highs. As we know, it's all talk until the deal comes. Well, yeah, until everything is signed on the dotted line. And we didn't get that over the weekend. So right. now I do expect things to get pretty rocky here going forward. I mean, and until there is some kind of deal, it's going to be it's going to be rough, I think. All right, so you say no one cares about fundamentals except no. Eric. Well, Eric from, says <laughs> fundamentals are driving the market. Well, from what I heard, they were really talking about fundamental issues, except for what Nick started off with about the, uh, the moving average stuff. Uh, you know, Washington is front and center, and then earnings. So, you know, both of these are really the, the two main issues mm -hmm. driving the market. But is anyone really paying attention to earnings? Uh, they're going to be this week well, with uh, all, the, all the companies coming out. We maybe. got uh, a lot of big banks and then a bunch of consumer staples. You got Coke, Pepsi. Right. Uh, so I think this is really going to be the uh, the centerpiece of the market over the next couple of days here. So, Especially if we don't get a deal and investors really have nothing else to focus on. So beyond all that moving average hoo ha that you're <laughs> spread on us, Nick, what, the, what does the market need to move higher? I think it needs to. I think it needs the Washington thing to go away. It needs yeah. to just get some certainty over what's going to happen, and then I think it, it it can work over. I mean, it work higher. This is a very usually a very positive technical time for the market to go up. I mean, I think it's like twelve out of the last fifteen years between basically Friday and like November fifth. Uh, if you looked at the date configuration, the market usually goes up. So to Eric's point, uh, friendly uh, uh, earnings data is a fundamental issue. I, I think. <sighs> I think it depends on how you parse it mm -hmm. out. Like, I don't think we need like stellar fundamentals to go up. Okay. I mean, I, I think you could have a very average earning season, and the market would still do well. I Tracy, mean, you say as long as there's QE still in place, market needs nothing else. Right. That's right. I don't think any of this other stuff will matter once we get over the Washington D.C. debacle. Hurl, yeah. yeah. Because it's all about QE, and I don't think they're tapering at all this year. That's just what my prediction is. And as long as that's in place, we're going to have the same kind of market we've had for as long as QE has been in place, which has been the bull rally. So I think it's still going to be rallying based on just QE alone. What do you think, Eric? Uh, you know, I generally agree. Um, you know, if they weren't going to taper in September when it you know, seemed you know, as if they were primed to do so, I don't think they're going to do it this month with all the Washington issues. And then you're going to go to the end of the year. Are they really going to want to do it then? I think they might just wait until, you know, the next uh, chairperson takes over, possibly yelling at this point. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of agree with Tracy. I think if we can get out of these D.C. Uh, hurdles, you know, it could be a solid time for the market, assuming earnings season uh, at least is average. You're actually keying in on uh, financial earnings and uh, consumer right. uh, sector data that uh, is coming out. You say there's uh, some question marks out there for retail right now. Well, uh, last, last week, I think, we, we saw a couple of names in the retail space see some... Uh, some very sluggish results, both in, you know, same store sales and, you know, looking forward to the end of the year. And, you know, this is going to be the, the key time for the retailers coming up. So, you know, we might want to look to these names to see how they're going to perform. So what do you guys think? If uh, the debt ceiling uh, is not raised by the October 17th deadline, which is later this week on Thursday, are we going to see uh, market go into a tailspin here, even the, maybe momentarily? Well, I've brought this up uh, last week. I think if that happens, we could see a TARP-like event like we saw when they were trying to pass the TARP stimulus, which is everybody thought they would do it. They didn't do it. The market really reacted and forced them to do it. So it, it plunged over 700 points, the Dow, and then the next day they passed the TARP package. I think something like that, and we already kind of saw it at the beginning of last week when the market kind of started to get pretty weak. Suddenly Washington started doing something because 
Wall Street started forcing them, forcing their hands. So mm -hmm. I think we could see some kind of big sell-off that forces them to really come to the table and do something quickly. That's just my Yeah, my any, any downdraft, Nick, you think will be short-lived, though? I think it'll be short-lived. I mean, my advice to investors would be to watch the T-bill market, watch the Treasury market. I mean, if you start to see one-month and three-month bill yields really start to spike, the more they spike, the more fear I think that will emanate and the more it will spill over adversely into the stock market. And I think that's how the politicians will, the tension will, will that will drive them to work. Because yeah. if they can't borrow in Washington, it changes the entire landscape. And so... To me, that's the, the main thing I'll be watching in the next couple of days. Eric, I'm going to give you the final word. Any uh, downdraft, if we miss that 17th deadline, going to be temporary? You know what? I think it will be temporary, and it depends. Um, I, I know there's some concern. Uh, we can go like a couple weeks after the ceiling and the, until we need to make a big payment. So, you know, we could breach the ceiling, so to speak, but then, you know, still kind of be in this no man's land for a couple of weeks. So I think that could really, you know, drive the market lower in the, in the near term. But... I do hope, at least, that they're going to do the right thing in the end and, and raise the ceiling. Okay. Well, one deadline that we're not missing here at the roundtable is weekly top stock picks. Those are in the next segment, so click on over.